Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's that time of year again. School is getting back into session, so let's take a look at some gaming accessories that can help make sure that you are entertained and distracted between, after, and possibly maybe even during class. Now, seeing as how this is a back to school video, it's probably a good idea to include a couple actual school related items, but still keeping them gaming relevant. For instance, this notebook made by Moleskin, which features an awesome old school Mario design that looks great. Or, for those times that you're getting a little too overwhelmed from tests back to back to back, a Game Boy that you can squeeze all your anger into. For those of you dorming, let's take a look at some awesome gaming themed lights to deck out your room with, starting with one of my personal favorite little collectibles, Pixel Pals. Pixel Pals are awesome little pixelated versions of characters turned into standing lights made by PDP, and they come in a large variety of different designs, mostly focused on gaming like the link I've got behind me, but they've got some great pop culture designs too, like Batman. Batman. Me personally, I focus on the gaming side, and there are a lot of different franchises that celebrates. So there's a lot of different stuff from Nintendo, but also a few things mixed in from Microsoft and Sony, like God of War and Halo. They just run off of a pair of AAAs, so you don't have anything plugged in them, they can just stand somewhere and lit up. If you don't want to worry about batteries though, they do have an optional kit you can buy that turns it into a plug-in power instead. Speaking of lights, but spelled very, very differently, uh, it's not out yet, but at the end of September, Nintendo will be releasing their new version of the Switch, the Switch Lite, which the big focus and drive of that is being a more portable experience, perfect for something that you need to take on the go. Its smaller size makes it something that's a lot easier to transport, and while its new battery life isn't as good as the new fresh switches, it still is a major improvement over the original launch ones. Most importantly to me though, is that they're actually adding a bit of splash of color back to the systems. The regular Switch right now is still only available in a basic black that you do customize with Joy-Cons as well. The Switch Lite is coming in a bunch of other colors. They have a basic gray one, but you can also do turquoise and yellow, which look awesome. They also already have announced one special edition system coming out a little later, which is the Pokemon design that is absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'd argue it's probably the best special edition design Nintendo's made so far for the Switch, though it doesn't really have that much competition. Another very important thing is to make sure you have battery power on the go for the Switch. Now, there's a couple options out there that are officially licensed. My personal favorite are the Anchor batteries. They are just a really good, efficient charging system for your Switch, but they're also pretty expensive. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, another great option is this charger from Bionic. What's really handy about this is not only is it an affordable way to charge the Switch on the go, but it also allows you to charge Joy-Cons directly attached to the sides of it. So you can actually charge a full set of four Joy-Cons all at once if you like, by having two attached to the Switch that's plugged in here and two attached to the sides. Really useful if there's games you like to play on the go in tabletop mode like Mario Kart or Mario Party. Before moving on, I want to take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now, you guys are used to seeing me here on YouTube, but we actually also have a website where you can see all the other stuff I've been working on, and that was made super easy thanks to Squarespace. With them, we were able to get the very straightforward but very appropriately named website, kevinkenson.com, and thanks to their pre-designed templates, we were able to make it look awesome. The templates made it not only easy to do, but are also designed to look great on both mobile and desktop, so I don't have to worry about what platform you guys are visiting it on. Whether you're looking to advertise your own brand or even selling product, they've got all the tools to help you make it a reality. Make sure to check out squarespace.com to start a seven day free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kevin Kenson to get 10% off your first website or domain. As digital games have become more and more popular, something that has become extremely important is storage space, because there is no worse feeling than wanting to play an old favorite of yours and realizing, oh no, I actually deleted it because I had to make room for some new release. Now on the Switch right now, your only real option for this is buying the biggest micro SD card you can find. But for Xbox One and PS4, there are a lot of options out there involved using external hard drives. And one of your best choices is to grab an actual external SSD like the T5 right here. SSDs have gotten a lot more affordable, and one of the big upsides to them is that along with being able to hold a lot of data, they're also a lot faster than traditional external hard drives, so you can even cut down load times for games. Plus, you could also just hook up to your computer and use it for actual school stuff if need be, I guess. By the way, everything we're talking about in this video is linked down below in the description, so if you're interested in grabbing something, make sure to check it out down there. Something I really love is couch co-op and couch competitive, because there is no better feeling than actually sitting next to a person that you're working alongside with or beating up in a game. But depending on the games you're playing, especially if you get up to four players, this can be really expensive if you don't have everyone bringing their own controllers. So let's take a look at some really good affordable options to make sure you have a full set of controllers on hand for things like Mario Kart or Smash Brothers. For Switch, my absolute favorite choice is PDP's 
face-off deluxe controller because it not only is really comfortable and has good button quality for its affordable price point, but it's got a lot of bonus features that not a lot of cheap controllers always have. You've got additional buttons on the backside you can program to do different things depending on the games you're playing. It has the ability to swap the face plates for a number of different designs that look really nice. And if you're playing any games to support in-game audio, you can actually plug a headset in right here and not have to worry about anything else. It also doesn't hurt that a lot of the designs they have for it are just awesome looking. I mean, this Pokemon one is one of my favorite looking controllers right now, hands down. Now, as for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, there's not as many games that really push local multiplayer, so it's not a problem as often. But if you find yourself in that situation, there's a couple of cheap controllers I can really recommend. For PlayStation, I really like Hori's Mini Gamepad. Now, this design is based a little more around an old school controller style, almost like an SNES design. It doesn't have handlebars, so it's not quite as comfortable unless you've got smaller hands. But in general, I find it to be a really good solution that's just an affordable choice that works on the PS4. There's not a lot of licensed controllers for PlayStation, and if you want something super cheap, you can find things online, but oftentimes they don't work out great. So as far as something that's actually officially licensed that works great goes, Hori is the best choice. As for Xbox One, there's a lot more choices out there, but my personal favorite has got to be Power A's wired Xbox controller, primarily because out of all the options out there, it comes the closest to actually feeling like a regular Xbox One controller. Sure, it's not the exact same, the button quality is not going to be quite as good, and the grip is a little different, but it is much closer than a lot of the other competition comes to, and still has some extra features like having extra buttons on the back. It's a very basic replacement choice, but most importantly, it's cheap and gets the job done. Going back to controllers for the Switch, something that's not a cheap option but I think is also really handy to pick up is the SN30 Pro Plus. And I actually just did a video recently on this that went really in depth if you want to check that out. I think the main important takeaways though is that it's a great wireless controller for the Switch and you can use it across multiple different platforms. You can also use it with a PC, Mac, or even Android phone. So it's something that's very adaptable to a lot of situations and it's just a great controller. If you want something a little fancier and maybe a bit of an 80s vibe, I'm also a huge fan of these neon light setups made by FanFit Games. Now, the one I got behind me is one of their first runs, which is a Pokeball. I love it. It's an awesome design, but it's also not one of the ones they actually make anymore. So there's a lot of other cool ones you can check out there on their website, including things based on Halo, Street Fighter, even just more generic stuff like logos from Twitch or YouTube. Another issue that comes up a lot for the Switch specifically is your comfort of using it on the go, because it's a great little handheld, but the Joy-Cons attached to the Switch aren't really designed to be the most comfy thing out there. So a really popular solution to this is gaming grips. Now there are a lot of different options out there, but there's a few specific ones that really stand out to me. When it comes to comfort, I'm a big fan of Skull & Co and Satisfy, which work a little bit differently. The Skull & Co is a more traditional kind of grip design, which just has even distribution of both hands, but something that's really cool about it is they have different grips you can attach to the back to adjust depending on your hand size. Satisfy, on the other hand, takes a slightly different approach in having a more angled out right grip, which is really important for games that rely on you using both sticks really often, because this actually makes a more comfortable position for where your thumb is gonna lie on the Switch. So if you're playing a lot of things that use dual stick controls, like say Fortnite, this is gonna be a better grip choice for you. Another thing that comes up a lot while playing the Switch portably is using headphones. Now you can use a wired set of headphones if you like, but if you want to use your favorite set of Bluetooth ones, you're out of luck because the Switch, for whatever reason, does not support Bluetooth audio. Thankfully though, there are a lot of adapters out there that will allow you to use them. And my personal favorite is the Genki. The Genki is just a really simple adapter that allows you to hook up up to two different wireless headsets at the same time. So that way, if you want to listen with someone else side by side, you have that option and it just looks great and really fits the theme well of using the Switch with its traditional Joy-Con colors. Personally, one of my favorite things is not only does it work with low latency headphones, but it also works beautifully with AirPods. One other option that I find is a little less comfortable but works as a really good all-in-one solution is this grip right here, because it not only gives you a larger grip design to use for the Switch, but also includes a built-in case on the back that can carry up to six games along with additional micro SD cards, which is really handy to have around. It also features a USB-C pass-through, so you are able to charge the Switch using the port down here, while making sure that the grip is nice and snugly attached to the Switch so it's not going to slip out or anything. It also comes with a little detachable stand you can use, so if you want to use it in tabletop mode, that option's there, but it's not a permanent fixture. Of course, you also need a way to transport all this gaming stuff when you're on the go. Now, thankfully, the Switch is a small enough portable system that it's easy to put in different bags, but you still want a way to protect it. I'm a really big fan of getting a carrying case for it. PDP makes an awesome line of them with different designs. I love this Charizard one. It's been my main go-to right now. It gives you not only a way to carry the Switch, but also a handful of a couple games and a little pouch to carry any additional small accessories like the Genki. 
If you want something that's a little more all-encompassing though, PDP also makes an awesome Switch-themed backpack. This has been one of my favorite accessories they released ever since the Switch first came out, or at least the older version of this. This is the Elite model that costs a little more money, but is an awesome choice. It not only has lots of areas to store everything you need for your Switch, but it still keeps enough room available that you can use it just as a regular backpack as well. Now, as for other systems like the Xbox One or PS4, those aren't really portable systems, but you might still want a way to bring them around and carry them around. Because they're so much larger, there's not really a convenient backpack that's gonna look normal. But if you wanna be able to transport systems, there are gaming themed backpacks like this one right here, which is able to fit very large systems and still have enough spare room to carry other stuff that you need. 